distance is needed. And you just pull on the segment control to actually change the curvature. It's a quite nice, quick tool to quickly sketch in an idea or bring in a bitmap sketch whenever you need it. Now, after you've got through sketching it, you're probably going to want to tra ray trace it to make sure that it's what you want to start with as a starting type system. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on the Raise button, and then I'm going to left mouse click and then drag the line over to that segment, and then I can see what actually happens when that segment uh, will actually hit the ray. And of course, you then start getting this type of interaction. I can specify any segment as being reflective or transmissive, depending on if it's a lens or a mirror. Now, at this point in time, you might want to bring a real system in. And to do that, what I usually do is use screen captures, and then I use that bitmap tool down over here to bring in the sketch. So this is a grab that I've done from uh, some using some tool like Snagit or Irfan View or any type of, of tool that can grab stuff. I take in a bitmap file, for instance, and then I just drop it in place over here. Once I've got it in place, I can drag on some, some of the control points of this to make it larger and move it into place. And then I can use the seg tool to create control points and lines and then just create the curvatures and sketch in this particular system just by pulling on these little green segment points to bring them out to the correct locations and move them where I want to. When I get done, I then have a real nice sketch of that particular lens in this case. And this is a nice hybrid lens that's used for a side emitting LED. So as we can see here, how can I verify before I even start ray tracing that I've got all the right materials and everything else? Well, the raise button over here helps me because I can then ray trace. I can start a ray off and say what's going to happen if I hit this particular surface. And I can verify that none of the light's going out here, hopefully, but it's all going off here at the sides. So this allows me to make sure that I have a good starting point for my optimization. So at this point in time, I'm going to want to go from the sketch utility and bring the whole real world into it. To do that, I'm going to bring TracePro up. Now, what's going to happen is I'm going to export. There's an export button in the optimizer, in the optimizer utility, that exports that particular 2D geometry into the 3D geometry we're seeing over here. Now, at this point in time, you've got all that set up. You can then go and create a source. And this is a real source. In fact, I'm using a Luxion Rebel LED in this definition. And I'm going to put that right over here at that starting area in my hybrid lens system. So I've now used Trace Pro to create the real source. There can be a, a four LED die, for instance, as four different sources. I can put in the rest of the system that I want if it's not varying. And the only thing I'm really worried about is this base, this hybrid lens, and where the die is. So this is the part that's coming in from the utility, and I'm going to let that portion vary. Before I do that, I'm going to ray trace it to make sure that this is indeed an a side emitting LED. Yes, I have some energy here that's coming out, and that's what you see over here. I'm going to want to get rid of this hump. And I'm going to want to have light coming out here at about 70 degrees, so it's going to be a nice, tight peak, hopefully. And how do I do this? I go back to my optimizer utility. And to do that, I go back into a capability to optimize. I hit this Optimize button over here. It then brings up my optimization menu. I can then have a spreadsheet. And over here it says, you know, where do you want to save the files that you want while you do this iteration? I can put that information in. But there's an operand section. And this operand section allows me to specify a candela, a candela profile target. And that's what I'm doing right here. I'm specifying candela profile target that's similar to what I am actually putting in here, which I digitized in when I clicked on the target value over here, this little digitized dialog showed up, and I can use the mouse to just click on these points, and the program will then create this particular mirror function for me. So this is what, when I ray trace, I want my candela output to look like. So I'm going to apply this, and I'm going to use this as the target for my optimization for this sketch of this system, using that real Luxion Rebel LED. And I'm going to specify what all the materials and the surface properties are for this particular system. And now I'm going to go off and I'm going to optimize. And to start the optimization, I'm going to click on the Start button. And this is going to start the optimization process off. But before I do that, I have to be able to specify the things in the sketch that are going to vary. And if you notice, I've clicked on a couple of these points here. This point right here and this point right here. And there's a little menu over here that I can then specify that what the value is or if this is a variable. And that's what I'm doing. I'm specifying that these are going to be variables and that they can move. And you can see right on the sketch how much they can move. Okay? So I can move in the 
y and z direction in this case, and I can move in the z direction in this case. So now we're going to start the optimization off. We're going to go through 84 iterations. And when I get done those 84 iterations, I'm going to have a different system altogether. So when I go back into Trace Pro after this thing is, is going to send the different iterations, the different systems that I'm going through and optimizing on, this is what happens. I've now got that nice peak that I was talking about. I've gotten rid of that middle area during these 84 iterations. And I've seen that the Fresnel lens changed a fair amount. You can see that there's a difference in the slope on these different pieces. And now we've got the system that we want that's perfected. I got very close to the starting point, so I didn't have to play around a lot. And I only had to do a couple of minutes of optimization to reach my ideal reflector in this case. Every single one of these iterations is written to a temporary file. You can go back and see what the values were for those points that we specified as being variables. And we can go back and we can investigate them afterwards. And there's even a candela plot that looks exactly like this that's also written out for all 84 of those iterations. OK, so at this point in time, I've introduced the product. I've shown you the new optimizer. And I want to bring up how you would use the optimizer to work through an LED lighting example, just like we just looked at. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to exit out of the PowerPoint presentation. And I'm going to bring up Trace Pro and the new interactive optimizer. So first of all, what I'd like to show you is that I'm going to load in a faceted reflector. So this is something that I've created before. And you can see it looks exactly like what we were playing with in the webinar. And I can grab, after I grab the segment tool here, I can grab on any of these little uh, green And I can change them. I'm also going to turn the rays on. At this point in time, say, for instance, that I had a ray going in this direction, you can see what happens to that particular facet, what happens with the ray. If I then go back to the segment tool, I can move it back and forth to see where that light's going to go. And this way, I can define any of my faster reflectors in any way, shape, or form that I like to. So this is quite a nice setup that we can set up in the program. And we can specify new segment points, for instance, for a spline over here. And I can add a control point. And we can then do some very unusual type shapes and then export them directly into Trace Pro. All I need to do to export to Trace Pro is make sure I have an open window and hit the Export button. And it will then generate that geometry. So I go back into Trace Pro. It's now sending that information into the product. I can then go back. And I can see that, indeed, there's the faster reflector that we created using the new spline sketcher. Okay. Now, let's go one step farther. I'm going to bring in and load the, uh, the demo system that we saw before. This is very similar to what we saw before with the, uh, this, the capability to use a bitmap, drop it in place, and then use the sketcher to go back and create all these different segments and such. And you can see what happens when I start pulling on objects with these rays that I've created here. You definitely want to, to create a system that is close to what we have here. We can, of course, move with these different things. I said that we had, it a, uh, we had an optimization menu and a property editor that allow us to take a look at some of these values. And this is where you would specify if, for instance, uh, this point that's grabbed over here is a specified point, or if it's a variable, and what its limits are to create a variable out of it. And you can see these spreadsheets are very, very simple to make. I just created this as a variable. You can now see the limits to which it can vary. And so we can then go back and go back into the optimization window, which is pulled up from the optimization menu here. This is where we're going to save our information if we were to do a nice iteration on this puppy. Here's where you can specify your multiple targets in terms of candela profiles. As I said before, if you click on a target portion of the candela profile, you can then change this particular output to almost any dimension that you want to. We can add a little hump here in the middle if we wanted to in this, this case. We then hit Apply, and this would now be our target for us to optimize on. As a matter of fact, we also see all the different variables that are set up before we go off and optimize. We can specify the 
different material properties.